Okay, everybody, welcome to the Virtual Business Owners Network on Friday, the 23rd of February. Our guest presenter today is John Murray of John Murray Headshots. I'd like to ask you all to go on mute if you don't mind. And uh, John's talk today is called Image Psychology, How People See You. And uh, just as a simple introduction, uh, as a simple rule, we don't know what we look like. Uh, the technology is always wrong. Understanding how we read and interact from a psychological and physiological view, we can impact and influence how we present the world. Um, thank you, John. Take it away from there. Good morning. Um, just a quick note. Uh, I'm a bag of allergies today. And also I'm in this little room, which is next to a corridor, which is full of people going up and down in a hospital. So you can imagine noisy, echoey corridors. So if you hear anything going on in the background, it's probably that. Or I'm right next to the N11 as well, which is even better because there's ambulances flying up and down all, all morning. Um, I want to talk in a less obvious way about headshots and about the images that we put online because I think it's very easy to assume that it's just a headshot or it's just something that you throw up on your website. But I want to draw attention to a few things, do's and don'ts really. Um, one particularly around how we present to ourselves and we present to other people. And then I'm going to show you some examples of bits and pieces. I'm going to dabble in. I, I don't know if anybody here has heard me speak before, but I mix behavioral sciences and photography together to try and draw out people um, like psychology, anatomy, physiology, endocrinology in particular, which is the study of hormones, because that impacts how we look, it ha impacts how we interact with other people. Um, and the whole thing about this is to understand who's seeing your images. Um, normally in a room full of people, I'd say, you know, who are we putting headshots online for? Who are we putting our images of ourselves online for? Who are we putting them on posters for? And people kind of think my clients or my potential clients or prospects or any of these sort of things. It's really not. It's humans because we got eyeballs 90 million years ago. So that squishy things like us could look at other squishy things and make sure they're not going to attack us. Like my studio is next to Grafton street. And if you walk down Grafton street at one o'clock today, you pass 60,000 people easy and walking past those 60,000 people because your brain is processing about 2 million bits of information every minute, everything down to the temperature of your toes that you've all suddenly just become aware of. And so when you're walking down Grafton Street, your brain is scanning every person you walk past, but ignoring everything else. It's ignoring all of those people because they don't, they're not relevant. Until you see a drunk person or a drug addict on Grafton Street at one o'clock in the afternoon, all of a sudden you become aware of them and they're the only person you remember when you walk off Grafton Street. So we do the same thing when it comes to image. We process everything based on shapes. So numbers are shapes, words are shapes. Everything is a shape and a pattern. So when we see that, we recognize it and we assign meaning to it. If I showed you in some of my other slides, if anybody's seen me before, I showed a beach ball and I say, what's this? And everybody just goes, it's a beach ball, but it's not. It's a picture of a beach ball. It's a two dimensional aspect picture of a beach ball and it's a drawing. But we assign meaning to that shape. And when we assign meaning to the shape, we assign function to the shape and everything else around it. So we do that when we see people as well. We look at a series of shapes, the shape of the shoulders, the position the head is in. And when we're looking at any animal, any squishy thing, we look to see where the eyes are as well. Forward facing eyes are always a predator. So we become slightly more aware of them. Now, how does that apply to this? Because when you see people on a screen, your brain believes they're actually standing in front of you in the room. When you see photographs of yourself, your brain believes that's actually another person standing in front of you. Um, anybody who's been in the studio, anybody who's heard me talk knows that I talk about this a lot, that when we feel uncomfortable looking at ourselves, we all blame one thing on our face we don't like. It's the same thing in every photograph. It's always there and we blame it on making us feel uncomfortable, but it's actually not that. It's empathy because the person on the screen is uncomfortable. The person in the photograph is uncomfortable and we need a reason why we feel uncomfortable. So if you're with somebody who's happy, you're happy. If you're with somebody who's sad, you're sad. If you're with somebody who's uncomfortable, you're uncomfortable. And when you see that image of a person on a screen, as far as the 90 million year old part of your brain is concerned, that houses the eyeballs, that is another person standing in front of you. You need to be socially appropriate and empathetic to that person. They feel uncomfortable. You move the same muscles in the same way. You feel uncomfortable. And then it's all a big bag of crap because every time you look at yourself, you're just going to go, oh my God, I hate having photographs myself. You freeze up, your body language freezes up. So that's that side of it. I'm going to jump onto some slides. I don't really want to kill this with slides, but I'm going to show you some stuff. You, um, and 
I'm going to run through them really quickly and I'm going to explain why they're in there because it's about what we're putting online. So it's about the images that we're using on our LinkedIn, the use the images that we're using on our um on our websites, the about us sections on websites. I get to see them a lot because I get sent them a lot from companies who are saying, I really want you to come in and work with us. This is what we have online. And you go on and look and think, oh, right. It's a uh, thanks for getting in touch. We'll uh, we'll definitely improve on what you have. And I'm going to show you some things that I, I don't know whether they just irritate me or they irritate other people, but I'll explain the psychology behind them and what we see and what we understand from them and we take from unconsciously. Um, I'm going to jump onto slides really quick. Um, into this, into this. Uh, if somebody could let me know if they can see my slides properly, it'd be great. Perfect. Thanks, Alec. Da, da, da. This is not me. This is Graham. Um, so I think people are afraid a lot in what they put online. I'm on LinkedIn. It needs to be super professional. It needs to be super clean. It needs to be, you know, me standing, doing that talk that one time that I did a talk on stage and I have a photograph of me, you know, with TED Talk in the background or TEDx or any of these things. We need to understand that when you see somebody's profile picture on LinkedIn, it's a centimeter and a half on your screen. It's even smaller if you're looking at it on your phone, but your brain does the same thing and looks at those shapes. So it's how people are carrying themselves across the shoulders and how it's framed. But if you're actually, I met before I shot your images, I remember at a networking event talking to you and we looked at your image and that's how you come into the studio because your image was you on a beach in the distance. So it was just a landscape photograph with a stick figure in it. And as we go across the images, what do we need to know? Um, You want to show your personality, right? So, if you were walking up to, to or dealing with somebody face to face, you need to see their personality. If they're completely devoid of personality, then, you know, you're just not going to want to deal with them. If somebody's going around and they have a face on them like the smell of vinegar, you don't want to engage with that. But if somebody has life in them, if they're happy and they're able to show off their personality and stuff, it's important to be able to see that. And that's one of the most important things. No matter whether you're getting headshots in Ireland, in England, in America, you know, who it's with. I know there's other photographers on here, David and stuff. If you're shooting with anybody, it's about getting to know that person and letting them draw out your personality so that people can see it and it can be recorded in images. Because we tend to stand in front of the camera and then think, I need to smile, smile his mouth, I'll move my mouth. And then you look like a seat sniffer on a bus because you're just moving your mouth and the rest of you says, I'm absolutely petrified. I don't want to be here. So it needs to be reflective and it needs to be based on trust. Um, This is Shane Craddock. And I shot Shane last year um a lot of people probably know who he is he's a big coach and as part of what something i was doing for sea change we're shooting people in the studio wearing these sea change green ribbon things and men don't speak out usually when they have something wrong with there's a whole mental health thing so as part of the sea change thing i started to shoot people screaming now you look at your linkedin and think it needs to be professional and it needs to be whatever like he uses this actual photograph as his linkedin profile picture and it's him screaming um in the studio or faking screaming but he just did it really well um but you know he's using that as a linkedin profile picture and that's perfectly acceptable because it shows some element of his personality or it shows that he's calling out to the world around him now when you see his linkedin posts he probably has seven or eight different images that he's using and they're all different aspects of his personality and stuff. And they're in all of his posts as you go through. I know Alec does it. Um, you know, Jason and stuff like that. We'll see. There's a huge amount. Simon Haig, anything you go through with the Samantha Kelly, uh, the Tweet and Goddess, there's a whole pile of their images and they're in all of their posts. And it shows elements of your personality and different elements of your personality. So you're able to use that. Your LinkedIn profile picture is just something to draw people in. And in the same way they'd walk up to you on the street or pass you in the street, it's the shape of the shoulders, the position the head is in, and then it's the eyebrows, the lower eyelids, and the corners of the mouth that make the massive thing. So you're connecting with somebody by looking at their profile picture as if you're connecting with them in real life because you're judging them in real life. Now, this is this thing I was kind of talking about earlier that we don't like what we see on screen. This is Neil Delamere. Um, and I shot Neil in the studio. This is what Neil looks like to everybody else. But see, we have to understand what the technology sees because when we see ourselves in the mirror, it's wrong. 
just plain and simple wrong. For 90 million years, we've only ever stood face to face with other squishy things. Now we're standing face to face with ourselves. And the camera was only invented 200 years ago. And the glass-based mirror was only invented 180 years ago, 20 years after the camera. So what we see in every respect is completely wrong. So this is what Neil see. This is what we see of Neil. This is what Neil sees of himself. So Neil thinks he looks like the lad on the with the mirror written underneath him on my right side of the screen, probably yours as well. Um, but it's wrong. Um, from a profiling point of view. Joseph McGuire will be all over this. Like on the right, on the real image, he has a heavy right cheek, and that's an external indication of comfort in positions of of abundance. So people in positions of power and stuff. But when we see the left image, he almost looks greedy because his left cheek is heavier. So there's two different personalities there, and we need to know that and we need to understand how that works. And the next bit is probably going to shock you because the leading cost. Uh, the, the leading cause of rhinoplasty in the States at the moment is selfies because UX designers in Instagram and TikTok and all these, they want you to use your phone. They want you to be on the app. The more time on app, the more the company gets paid. And that's just the way it works. So what happens then when we have photographs taken or we stand in front of the, the camera is this is the same boy standing in the same position doing the exact same thing. The only difference is the zoom level of the lens. So there's a significant portion or a significant amount of distortion on that first image, the 24 millimeter image. So what they want to do is make sure that we have a jawline on your Instagram and on your TikTok and everything else, because nobody wants to have double chins in photographs and nobody wants big sticky out ears in photographs either. So what happens is they use that 24 millimeter lens. It elongates the face and gives depth from the front of your nose to the back of your head. But it's distorting the whole face. So, and you can even see it across his shoulders as well. It almost looks like he's leaning forward and his chin is up. Then the second image, if you're short-sighted, it's the level of zoom we're seeing, but the technology is wrong in that we see three-dimensionally. The camera only sees two-dimensionally. So there's distortion between the lens and the sensor. So at 70 millimeters, which is that kind of level of, of zoom that we see it for short-sighted, his nose is still distorted. The shape of his shoulders and the shape of his body language is still distorted. And the last image is actually what he looks like. So I shoot on a 100 millimeter lens and that on a full frame body to anybody who understands full frame, it's a larger sensor. Um, that on that doesn't have any distortion, but he still has to stand in weird positions to teach the camera to see three dimensionally. And we have to use a whole pile of light. Um, so when you see yourself in the mirror, it's wrong. When you see yourself on camera, it's wrong. Every single time, unless there's very specific controls that not a whole lot of people tend to put into place. Um, so just some mistakes to avoid. Uh, I don't want to bore you for ages. So um, this is one of those mistakes. Now, I've just gone to About Us pages on websites. Um, I probably forgot to block out people's names on this. But sure, we'll run with it. Um, this is fresh out of the 1980s you know the dropped shoulder and the head up and shooting from way above and um, you see the coloring is wrong as well so the coloring is all over the place this posture is terrible we're confident we stand really tall you want people to know that you're confident so in your photographs you should be standing tall because we follow what goes off the screen so if your posture is off like these are sitting on a stool they're leaning under they think they look a bit like they couldn't be bothered um, and just the whole lot's wrong like it just feels wrong and then the lad on the right with the red hair big rosy cheeks on him that's fine but somebody like a retoucher and editor should be taking that out um, because he's obviously embarrassed or he's obviously nervous and what's happening is it's causing the rosacea in his cheeks now if that's a normal thing for him all day every day then that's fine you leave it in but here you can see that they're uncomfortable the lad on the left the older guy has a social smile. So that smile I was talking about earlier where you look like a seat sniffer on the bus. So your top lip is completely flat and his lower eyelids are curved and you don't curve your lower eyelids when you're uncomfortable. You hold them open when you're stressed and that's what's happening in the image. So it just feels wrong. But this, these two images are primarily about the angle of the shot and letting people pose in that position because you want to see confidence across the shoulders and your man's tie is open on the right as well. It just makes it look sloppy so they're not uniform. Um, these are another example of things that people do wrong now if you look across a lot of the images a lot of them are quite good the girl in the bottom in the middle is very good the image above her is very good they're across the shoulders they show confidence they're genuine reactive smiles but when you look at the uniformity of the images across the board they're all different 
Now, they've used the same tone in black and white, but that doesn't make any difference because the first guy, he's clenching his lips, his head is up really, really high, but it's professionally shot. Now, when you look at the next image, it's not shot into a white background. She's shot in a garden or somewhere. So there's no uniformity between those images. The next guy is shot next to a window or a light source. So one side of his face is completely shadowed. So across all of these images, like the next guy is obviously on on the bottom row, the first guy there. He's obviously on his first day and they're just taking pictures for his ID card. I'm not sure that'll do. Um, And then the last one is a selfie. So they're all completely different. Unconsciously, that suggests that there's in, in... what word am I looking for, Alec? Um, there's indiscrepancies or there's, there's not a uniformity through the service in the company. Inconsistency. Is that there the word you I mean? Yes. Inconsistency. Thank you very much. Me and my allergies in my kind of... Yeah. And inconsistency. This all over the place. Yeah, and and you know, if you were looking at a business, you'd think they didn't have any um, coherence. Exactly. You know? you'd think there wasn't any... get you know, They weren't working as a team, that everyone yes. was off doing their own thing. That's what you would think when you look yeah. at that. Yeah. Like these could be, you know, a group of anybody. It doesn't really matter who it is, but they feel like there's no consistency across the board because they're all different. Um, the next one is another company. Now, I like where they've gone with it, but the same thing is kind of happening. You know, they went, oh, we'll get everybody to cross their arms. Not everybody's crossing their arms. And the top images, you can kind of see it. They're all shot different. This, the first guy is obviously shot next to a light source that's on his right side and he's facing into the light source which is great but the lad on the far end who kind of looks like Rick Stein the uh, the chef like he's shot with the light source at his back and then there's a, a change in the light so there's obviously near a window and he has halogen bulbs or something on the inside um, of the of the office or wherever he is and they're kind of all shot differently the third one the girl in the green top that's shot by a professional photographer it postures a bit all over the place and the image is not really what I'd be kind of going for but like you can see that they were looking for a look as in ah sure we're a bit of crack you know that we can cross our arms and we can have a big smile on our face but as we go through the images or as you go through the images there they all kind of feel different and they're all shot different and there's just again that no cohesion across the, the work so why did I put her in there Um, because there was supposed to be words beside her but uh I don't know where they went. Um, this was shot on LinkedIn, actually. Um, I shot her. She was nine months pregnant at the time, and she was about to go on, on leave. But big, genuine, reactive expressions that are based on trust is important, rather than it being, I need to stand here and I need to smile because that's what's expected of me. Um, top tips. Uh, the light should always be behind the camera. Now, as I stand here talking to you, the light is here. The camera's slightly further away because of the zoom level of the lens. But the light should be in front of you um ideally especially if you're going to take selfies or anything like that like i'm not going to tell you you need to have a professional photograph on linkedin if you can take a decent selfie and you can use that on linkedin that's going to represent you then that's fine it's perfectly fine but it needs to have good posture and it needs to have good light so you need to have a window or something behind the camera where you're taking a photograph you don't need to be like me actually if you're still looking at me on the screen the window's behind me I don't know what that did with the camera. Did it come back on? It did. So now you've got the windows behind me and it's completely shadowing me out and it's taken from me. I should be the brightest thing in the room. If you're driving down the road at night and somebody turns on, that's really bright. Uh, somebody turned, has their full headlights on, you're supposed to kind of look at the pillar on the far side of the car and look at the side of the road as you drive past them. But we don't. We stare straight at it because we stare at the brightest thing in the room. So the brightest thing in the image should be your face and it especially should be your eyes. Uh, genuine expressions, none of this, I'm smiling because I think I need to, you know, or like pulling these kind of fake smiles because they just don't work. Because if somebody feels uncomfortable and looks uncomfortable, we feel uncomfortable with it. And then all you're doing is you're harming your brand. Um, I hate reading stuff off a screen because you're already seeing it. Like you can read it as well. Um, remember that you're communicating with humans. Forget the fact that you're putting something on LinkedIn. I'm sure it's only my LinkedIn profile picture or it's only stuff that I'm throwing into a post, you need to understand that as people see that, they're believing that you're an actual person standing in front of them in the room and you need to connect to them on a human level. And the only way to do that is to connect to the camera on a human level, which means connecting with the photographer who's taking the photograph on a human level. So if you're comfortable with the photographer, you're comfortable with the person, and it could be your your friend, your sister, your brother, 
anybody, whoever's taking that photograph of you that you're going to use online, make sure that you're comfortable with them and you're comfortable in their presence because that's going to reflect in the photograph and your clothes as well. Never, ever wear stuff or bring stuff into a photo studio that you're not comfortable wearing because if you feel uncomfortable, you're going to look uncomfortable. Look, I hate this dress, but I kind of think I need to wear it because it's what's expected of me. I think my LinkedIn headshot at the moment has me in a hoodie. You know, it's it, it's a thing. Just be comfortable. Um, I was being funny there when I said, except for the, when the AI aliens come for you. Um, and don't be afraid to show your personality. Look again, saying the same thing over and over again because it's important. People buy for people, and people for millions of years have dealt with other people like tens of thousands of years since the industrial revolution or the, the agricultural revolution we've dealt with other people face to face for trade and it's just always been that way technology shouldn't change that like technology doesn't change that your brain is still hard word to want to connect with humans on a human level even though there's a picture on a screen or there are people in a zoom call you know we still look at them in the same way and we still carry or, or read their information and read their body language in the exact same way because that's what's vital it's connecting with people on a human level whether it's through a still image through the video through advertising pictures that you see on a wall somewhere it doesn't matter your brain believes they are actual people standing in the same room as you doing the exact same thing and it's important for you to have that empathetic response when you see them so if you see a picture of somebody looking happy you feel happy if you see a picture and look at sad they look sad you feel sad it's just we can't get away from it um unless you have certain types of autism or you have what's called face blindness where the fusiform gyrus this part of your brain here doesn't work um and that's really all um did i show more stuff no i didn't because i didn't want to bore you with tons and tons of slides um so yeah has anybody any questions I'll open the floor to questions uh, yeah first thanks very much john and uh, thank you very much for that uh, i'm going to agree with you everything well except one thing if you don't mind mm. of course uh, when, it, when it comes to photography or it comes to accountancy or it comes to digital marketing if you're in business use somebody who knows what it's about stop trying to do this stuff yourself a you're probably brutal at it B, you'll make a hames of it and C, it won't do you any favors going forward. And it's not expensive to get a lot of these things done. So that's the only disagreement I have with you, John. I thoroughly enjoyed uh, working with John. Mad as a brush in a studio. Um, you know, I still laugh at it, but I got the great shots out of it. You know, so thank you very much. If you have a couple of minutes for questions, great. While you're doing that, I, here's the link of who's attended today. It's just gone into the chat. So fire ahead and ask. put your hand up if you want to ask John a question. They don't. You are so succinct and so good, John. They don't even need to ask you a question. No, it's very understandable and very relatable. Yeah, if I could make a comment, John, that was fantastic. Um, I think a better word than uh, consistency would be congruency. And the fact that all yes. those pictures were incongruent because it's all about it's a brand, it's our image, and it should be the same across the board. And um, yeah, that was just a really good presentation. It really stood out and well done to you. Good man. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, good to see you, Jason. Um, I'll send you on the video. You'll get to see that. Um, yeah, no, you've got to mention. I've yeah? got to mention. you got to mention. I've, I've, I've heard you speak before, John, so I know what you're, uh, probably know what you've said. Yeah. It yeah. was a little bit of a different talk, but it was, uh, Alec will send you on the video, but you did get a mention because your headshot images are like, the images we shot in the studio are on everything. They're all over the posts. They're everywhere. So. Yeah, no, they're, they're very good. Yeah, I was coursing you. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, hang in there, John, as long as you like. I'm going to stop the recording now. Uh, I know you have to go at some stage because you have a few psychiatrists to shoot. Um, so uh, thanks again. Very much appreciated. And please uh, connect with John.